Our lesson today is looking at graphs and being able to analyze graphs, um, talking about you know, maximums, minimums, increasing and decreasing, you know, where in intercepts are, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, all become very important when it comes to uh, using calculus to solve problems. So, uh, as tough as calculus sounds, it ends up being a study of graphs as much as anything else. So, let's first look through, one of the things that they'll talk about is the idea of a relative minimum or relative maximum. Well, minimums just mean like the bottom point of a graph, like a, you know, point at the bottom, at a valley type deal. This would be a minimum. If I have something that goes up and then back down, this top mountain peak would be a maximum. So, where do relative minimums occur on this map? Well, the only time that I have a, uh, a valley here is at this point, 1 comma negative 32. They only care about the x value. So x equals 1 is where the relative minimum occurs. Where does the relative maximum occur? Well, that's when I have this mountaintop here, which occurs at x equals, what, negative 3. All right, and now, one of the main things to look at here, why is this point right here not a maximum? Well, even though it is bigger than this, you know, maximum we talked about already, it didn't just stop and you know peak back down like this guy did. For it to be a maximum, we need to look at where it actually has this mountaintop idea. All right, so number three and four, talking about increasing and decreasing regions. The way I look at this, we all always have to look from left to right as we read this. So as we go from left to right, is my graph going upwards or is it going downwards? So starting here, as I'm going to the right, my graph here is going upwards. So this is an increasing region. The way we write this is like we did domain. We start at negative infinity, and it's increasing until I get to this point. All we care about is the x value, so it's increasing until I get to 3. The x value is 3. All we care about are the x values. Okay, where else is it increasing? Well, down here is where it starts increasing again. Up, 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 forever and ever. So the x value here would have been 1 all the way up to forever, which would be infinity. Okay, on uh, which values, or I'm sorry, which intervals is it decreasing? Well, that would be this portion right here that is going downhill as I move from left to right. It's going downwards. So this would be from the x value of 3, negative 3, I'm sorry, <coughs> to the x value of 1. So that would be your decreasing region. All right, the last part, what are the zeros of f of x? That just means when does the function actually equal zero? When does it cross the x-axis? Well, that happens here in two different places. What are the x values when that happens? That's at negative three and at positive three. That's all you need to put. So when it asks for zeros, you're just looking when does it cross the x-axis. You'd be surprised how often that ba or, uh, a calc question is uh, based and ends up winding down just to something as easy as finding zeros. All right, here's another graph that we can look at. We're going to look at the exact same thing. Uh, first off, where is a relative maximum of this function g of x? So when do I have a mountaintop? That happens right here at this point, 3 comma 7. So x equaling 3 is your maximum. The minimum occurs, well, when do I have the valley? Well, that would be this point right here at negative 3 comma 2. So x equals negative 3 is that uh, point right there. <clears throat> okay, so those are relative mins and maxes. Sometimes they talk about these ideas of absolute min and max. When you look at absolute min and max, this is when we need to start looking at, um, excuse me, we also need to look not only at what we've uh, found before with these peaks and valleys, but we also need to look at the uh, end points is all we need to look at extra. So, what we're going to look at first for the absolute maximum on this. Well, where did the maximum occur? We said the max occurred at x equals 3. So, x equals 3 and your function value was 7. Okay? That's how we want to look at this. Now, we also need to look at the two endpoints. So, the endpoints are when x equals negative 6 and when x equals positive 6. What are the y values, the function values at those points? Well, at negative 6, the function value is 5. At positive 6, the function value is negative 4. So, where does the absolute maximum occur? Just essentially, where is the biggest function value between these points? 
Well, the biggest function value happens when x equals 3. And if they ask what the absolute maximum is, the highest point, the maximum actually is that number, which is 7. Okay? We look at the same idea with a minimum. Okay? So if I change this to a minimum, well, we said that the uh, minimum happened when x equals negative 3. The function value there was negative 2. We still have to look at the endpoints again, which are negative 6, the y value is 5, and positive 6, the y value is negative 4. So where does the absolute minimum occur? Well, what's the lowest of these three numbers? That would be this guy right here, negative 4. So the absolute minimum occurs when x equals positive 6. And that means that the minimum value then would be negative 4, because that's what the function value is at that point. All right, on what intervals, 10 and 11, are we increasing versus decreasing? Well, what I'm going to do here, knowing I need to find both, is I'm just going to go one step at a time. So I'm going to start here at negative infinity, and at the beginning, I am going downhill, down, down, down. So I'm decreasing, for sure, from negative infinity up to this minimum here, which happened at x equals negative 3. All right, from here, from negative 3, I'm increasing right now. I'm increasing right until here. I'm getting what this is kind of a horizontal tangent is what we're going to call that. Um, so from here, from negative 3, x equals negative 3, to x equals 0. Remember, we only look at the x values. This is where I have an increasing region. Okay? From here, starting at 0 again, up to positive 3, hmm, I'm increasing again. So I just put from 0 to 3. You cannot put negative 3 to positive 3. That is not correct. Because right here, it is not going up still. We have had that horizontal tangent. All right, the last part, decreasing here from 3 all the way to everything else. So from 3 to infinity is where I have a decreasing region. All right, the last one, just as a reminder of a transformation. I know you guys all love the transformations. They want to make it so the maximum, which is this point right here, is moved to the origin. So to move this to the origin, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just say, well, here's my function. It was g of x. How can I adjust it to make it to the origin, to shift it to the origin? Well, I would need to move it left by three units. To do that, to move it left, I need to add three on the inside. To move it down to the origin, I would need to move it down seven units. So as a vertical shift, so vertical goes on the outside, down seven units. So that's how you would transform it so the maximum is at the origin. If I had said uh, maybe make the minimum at the origin, just for another example, I'd have to move it <coughs> excuse me, to the right 3. So this would be x minus 3 on the inside to move it to the right 3. And then I would need to move it up 2, so plus 2 on the outside. So those are just a couple examples just to remind you of how to do uh, some transformations because those can end up being a, uh, a lifesaver for some multiple choice questions.